Hey everybody, welcome to episode 65 of Founders Gyan and thanks for tuning in. This week we don't have one or two or even three founders. In fact, we have four panel members. That's right. This week we have a panel discussion and the topic of today's talk is giving up a job and starting up. All four are startup founders. So I'll let you learn more about them on the show. Do check out www.foundersgyan.com slash EP65 for the show notes. To links to all that we talk about on the show. Okay, fasten your seat belts and let's get going. Okay, today we have a slightly different uh, take uh, on Founders Gyan. We have a panel of four different people. Uh, they are Dinesh, Piyush, Naga Subramaniam and uh, Shankar, Shankar Narayanan. They come from varied backgrounds. They are all either, uh, they all either have started a startup or are in the process of starting something and our topic today is going to be how difficult was it to give up a job and start up so it's a very simple topic but i'm sure there's going to be a lot of talks and discussion about that uh, i'm sure all our panel members are going to say uh, it was difficult but we did it for the passion or whatever but i'm going to make sure that sadishe answers <laughs> are not <laughs> accepted and we dig deeper and deeper you know into the real sense and try to understand uh, the the difficulties of leaving a job and starting up and also the advantages you know what are the advantages you do get uh, in in starting up so we will start with a quick introduction of one or two minutes of each of the panel members so uh, we will go around in order so we will start with uh, dinesh we'll start with dinesh uh, please uh, introduce yourself for the benefit of our listeners okay so this is dinesh and uh, our company's name is kalpkriti and uh, before starting this venture i was working in intel and before that in samsung so i have in total some 9 10 years of uh, experience technically and for last one year we have been making one application uh purpose of this application is any common user can use it and uh, make a simple animation gag and share it on social media so that's what we are doing for last one year okay excellent and and the name of your company or is kalpkriti okay K, can yeah. you spell that out please it's k a l p k r i t i okay k l p k r i t i dot com right right okay excellent great uh, we'll move to piyush uh, thanks dinesh and welcome to the show uh, piyush hi everyone good to be part of this podcast So I'm the founder of About Stays. We are making an app for the hospitality or hotels domain, and uh, I've been in the corporate world for about ten years uh, across two companies. I uh, was working in my last role. I was working as a business consultant. I've traveled extensively uh, during my work and enjoyed it. Enjoyed learning, and uh, to increase that learning, I've started a startup. And hopefully, this will be a more pleasurable journey. Thank you. Okay, excellent. Pish, and uh, could you spell out the name of your startup, please, for our listeners? A B O U T about stays S T A Y S about stays dot com, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Shankar. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Shankar Narayan. Uh, hail from Bangalore. Uh, I'm the founder of a small firm called Glue V T Labs. That's G L U E V I T Y Glue V T Labs. um before that i was an embedded software engineer mainly experienced in the automotive sector uh at gluvity we try to conduct lot of hands on workshops and programs for mainly the engineering students uh, to bridge the gap between their classroom learning and what's practically needed for them to know and understand so that's what we do and uh, yeah that, that's my journey has started about 6 months back and i hope it will be pleasurable thank you great um So last but not the least uh, Naga Hey guys uh, Ram I'd like to thank you for making me a part of this podcast So I am a chartered accountant by profession and uh, I was working in Texas Instruments for the last 3 uh, and a half years uh, Over the last 6 months I am on a journey of discovery and I've started uh, my own consulting firm helping young professionals manage their taxes and finances better uh, My company doesn't have a name yet because I'm waiting to hit like a client or a turnover number before we name it and all i'm also traveling across india trying to find and do different things and trying excellent excellent naga so there you have it a wide and diverse uh, panel uh, and uh, the introduction is just to start so now 
let's go around the table uh, i'm just going to go around the table in uh, no particular order uh, i'm just going to look at the faces whoever seems like he's going to sleep will be the person who will have to talk first uh, but we will cover everybody uh, so let's talk about the core topic which is how difficult was it to leave a job and start up so uh, we'll start with uh, dinesh who seems very relaxed so we'll wake him up uh, dinesh uh, your take on this yeah uh, actually again cliche it was a difficult it will be difficult for anybody uh but the thing is like uh, in my case one thing which helped me was i was already having a partner okay and uh, i was working with my partner in uh, intel also for 2 uh, 3 years so we were having good gelling and then we were often discussing like we can do this and that right so when i quit we both planned that we will this is how we are going to do this is what we are going to execute so we already had our plan means <clears throat> and uh, we both were quitting together so it was not like i quit and i build a team i i quit that time i was having a team and that thing helped me a lot i think okay so basically you're saying that uh, since you had a had a uh, had a companion or a co-founder uh, the task of leaving the job and starting made it that much uh, it, it was much more easier than had it been you alone quitting and joining is that a right thing to say yeah absolutely yeah okay great so shankar why don't you chime chime in with your views uh, on how difficult was it yeah it was uh, extremely difficult i would say i mean uh, because for about 12 years you are used to looking at uh, you know sizable number amount of money in your bank account and you know believing that that's not going to happen right from next month and i have a family i have a, a son of 6 year old uh, you know looking at the future you know, future planning uh, you got to completely have a different mindset from you know planning your next 16 years to starting planning uh, your next 16 days so uh, quitting the job routine job and starting off was extremely difficult um, in fact i i really would thank you that you bought uh, something in the beginning if i just say that okay i had a passion and i'm doing it it's absolutely wrong because once you take a plunge you see the real world you are going to see the difficulties what you wouldn't have thought of you are going to take in lot of those those bitter moments which you wouldn't have thought about when when you when you decided to quit we we will have a very beautiful picture of what quitting a job and being an entrepreneur is but once we take a plunge and get into the practical world I mean as in when days progress it becomes more and more difficult to hold yourself back and say no i'm going to stay here and you know make a change to my own career rather than jumping back to the corporate world so yeah it's very difficult it was difficult it is still difficult to stay on uh, until we can build a sustainable business so that that's my opinion about it uh, excellent shankar so when you're talking it just hit my mind and i made a note we'll come back to that in a moment so you talked about the sizable bank amount and a check paycheck coming in uh, every month uh, so i think uh, all entrepreneurs when they start uh, they know that it's not going to happen but they don't unless they see it happen month after month uh, the reality doesn't sink in it takes it doesn't yeah, sink it takes yeah, it to sink in so we will just <laughs> come back to that piyush uh, what what's your views on how difficult is it <laughs> well ram in my 10 years of uh, corporate experience one thing i've learned is there are two things that can motivate a person it's either money or it's the kind of work you do right and that's been across all the resources who reported to me or uh, for myself right and uh, as and when you go through the corporate ladder one of them will obviously you lose interest or one of them will not be working and that's at, at that point of time you think you know you need a change either you either the people switch jobs if they are really daring then they actually start a startup right so it's it's difficult but i would say that this is something what each individually even switching a job is not that easy right it's it's a new environment so similarly a startup is very different only thing is that money is low your work increases hell lot but then it's the same thing between switching jobs getting into a startup here you're enjoying your work more as a startup because you can do what you want to do the earning potential is up to what how big you can make it right and so i would say it's uh, it's it's as good as switching a job 
just that the effort here is more and the money is less in the beginning but it's up to you how you take it forward okay great so we'll come to naga who still yet to start up so naga have the panel number scared you into not not starting up what's your views now <laughs> well uh, see i call myself a multi potentialite so someone who has like diverse interests right and so uh, in terms of starting up i have a i have a business i have like around 50 clients i help them with their taxes and their finances but it's not really big and i wanted to reach around 250 people and that's when i'm going to give it a name because till then for me it's just an idea right but uh, you know just coming back to the main question of how difficult was it to leave your job to start up it's especially more difficult when you're just starting off and you know for me it was like 3 and 1/2 years and uh, the the biggest reason i did it was because i wanted to live a different day for the rest of my life i just didn't want to live the same day over and over again like you do in your corporate world right that is one and in, in terms of difficulty i feel that uh, planning plays a big role and uh, that's uh, that's one of the things that shankar touched upon when he said that you know leaving a salary credit i have a son i have a chai uh, you know i have a family so i need to take care of them or what dinesh said in terms of a co-founder or what pure said in terms of what motivates us right whether it's money or whether it's the work for me it was kind of like a combination of everything but fortunately i'm still young enough that you know i don't i'm not married yet and i don't have a kid so i i wanted to leave and you know just dip my feet in the water and try different things before my uh, responsibilities really take off and if things work out and also i'll just continue doing this but if it doesn't uh, then i guess i'll have to go back to a job but one thing i'll do differently is that i'm going to do a better balance and i'll still be working on something on the side and that is something that will you know eventually pan out and that's my idea on this okay excellent uh, naga thank you so much for that now uh, i just want to come back to what shankar was saying about the sizable bank amount so uh, obviously sizable for you might be different from sizable for me <laughs> to say bill gates yeah. <laughs> it all depends on uh, on our lifestyle so uh, what would you guys recommend uh, this is an open uh, so now we will get into open discussion so we will have people pitching in their views and uh, contradict or support each other so what do you think is like a good uh, six months one year what do you be our uh, ideal bank balance you know uh, before we uh, start up yeah okay so if i can uh, put a bit of more light on that uh, i would say it's a bit of negative uh, idea to um, keep some money in the bank and then say i'm going to run the show until it's exhausted uh, that will kill the whole idea of doing something because you are enjoying it as uh, piyush mentioned so i i am kind of against that idea that you keep a certain amount of money in the bank and then say i'm going to run the whole show until this money is exhausted rather a positive move for an entrepreneur would be to say okay i'm going to start off i'm and i'm going to run the show until i start sustaining out of the money that i'm going to pull out of the organization i start because if you have if you know at the back of your mind that you have a backup money to you know take care of you for the next one year i'm sure at some point you are going to just exhausted and think of getting back that's my view okay anybody care to agree disagree i agree and disagree with you shankar but uh, uh, i really like the point that you said that as long as you think that there's a backup then you you're always going to fall back on it so uh, it's kind of like what you know i generally hear is that if you really want to motivate someone you know you should not give them any options so i guess that's one of the ways of putting it but in case uh, you know people have commitments and they have a family to take care of so i think that keeping that money aside should be for them and not for your startup what do you think right yeah i, I agree to that agree to that uh, why would i slightly disagree with shankar is that um, usually startups these days they just look for funding as soon as they launch you know and i i think that is a wrong approach because for them making the startup successful is not the intent but just to get funding the first round of funding so if if i feel that if you have a runway of say one year or one and a half years and that much of a bank balance for you to at least give a shot a decent shot to your startup then i think that's the amount that you should have in your bank and then obviously with that amount you're not supposed to you know splurge it around and enjoy life you can do a bits and pieces of that with your family but then most of it should go into your startup obviously you have to change the way you've been living while you had a job but you should have a reasonable amount of a bank balance to have a runway of one and a half years uh piyush piyush the the point i was trying to make is not about pouring our money into the startup my startup has been running for 6 months completely upon my own money what i say for last 12 years 
but what i was trying to point at is if you keep certain amount of money and say i'm going to run the show only i till i exhaust this that's a bad deadline and i i stick to that uh yeah i kind of i kind of agree with what shankar says i mean uh, uh, if you have a deadline that's based on your savings uh maybe it's not a good idea but at the same time you know i think you also need to take into consideration that if you don't have enough runway like uh, piyush uh, and naga says uh then uh, probably you you might just give up so uh, too soon you, you know maybe you will run out of money and give up too soon and uh, to to your other point shankar i am i don't know if you have noticed this trend or not but uh, uh, people who are out of a corporate job and doing their own things uh, may not necessarily get a job back in the corporate at the levels that they were used to uh, you, you know so yeah. maybe uh, even if you lose your money you know uh, uh, i mean maybe even if you spend all your money uh, you might not be able to get a job so easily also you know so uh when you leave the corporate world i think uh, you burnt your bridges there at that point of time i mean not uh, uh not really i mean uh, in terms of people but in terms of a job i think the moment you have left your corporate uh, job uh, and there is a break of 2 3 months you know when you have started something i think at that point of time itself you have burnt your bridges kind of uh, maybe not in terms of money uh, that depends on each person's savings but um, i think uh, in terms of a job the job safety net you know i think you've already burnt it after a 3 or 4 month break i don't i don't really, i don't fully agree with you uh, ram uh, because uh, uh, people always go back right and you always have these options and uh, the other thing is it's also the kind of experience you get while you are starting up right maybe uh, the kind of experience you have is actually adding to your uh, personality or adding to your character and one of the things that organizations right now look for is people with a lot of depth of character diversity in culture and stuff like that so if the stuff that you have done is really going somewhere i think maybe uh, your organization or any other organization could be open to uh, hiring you back or uh, from an example for me my boss with whom i had like a really bad falling out because he really liked me and stuff uh, he called me back and said you know if you want to come back you are always welcome so uh, you should you should introduce me to your boss you know what if what if the thing you're doing is not going so well you know so i mean obviously startups cannot always be a success you know sometimes what you do might uh, really not i mean your vision may not align with the market you know what you did might might have been great in your mind but uh, maybe not so great in people's mind so uh, but anyway, digressing and uh, i think we might take up the whole time in this so let's move on to the next um, uh, next sort of point which is uh, what are the positives you guys are seeing uh, uh, after job so i will probably start with dinesh who looks very comfortable i think he's <laughs> no, no. actually slept off <laughs> uh, so positive things uh, see what i can say is in job like uh, as time passes years passes like uh, you you become more skilled in certain skills right but in startup you will get more knowledge right you will know stuff around you you will know more about yourself because i think what happens is uh, in corporate is somebody else is taking decision most of them right and you are a part in big machinery where you have to take small decision and mostly very small things are impacted by you right so you are in your comfort zone but here in startup like everything you are deciding some decisions are going good some are going bad so you do a lot of rest- retrospection than you used to do in corporate so that is uh, the way you look at things the way you you know try i think co- consciously i never try to understand how i think before i uh, before means when i was in corporate but now i many times i start questioning my you know thought process why i took that decision which uh, doesn't happen when we work in uh, corporate thing so that is the main main thing uh, i see positively which happened to me okay anybody else has anything to add i think uh, dinesh that you feel that way is because maybe we, uh, you were mostly the technical side uh maybe the manage uh, may- maybe the management if you have taken the management route maybe they would feel differently uh could be uh but uh, again means even if you uh see like uh, i was working very closely with my manager so there also like uh, yes yeah, i agree that the certain level of you know decision making freedom increases right at manager level but still i will say then he is doing those decisions only right he is in his own sphere right so he become skilled on those things 
he becomes skilled on you say requirement gathering how to talk to client and uh, when things go wrong to whom to blame and <laughs> like those things right so everybody becomes skilled right in certain zone but here whatever you're learning now will not work after three months right there you'll have to learn new things so uh, means nothing will work permanently in startup but in corporate it will work for quite a long time till you get promoted or you get a new role I want to add a point here because I was a manager before starting up and uh, then uh, managers also have to have some restrictions. They have, uh, they have, uh, they have some uh, restrictions on uh, what, uh, what freedom they have uh, and they are also uh, accountable to report to their own bosses, uh, their own managers. So uh, while it looks from the outside that maybe managers have a bit more freedom than technical people, again, I think in a corporate world, uh, uh, what Dinesh is trying to say is uh, you probably get more in-depth knowledge on a few key skills uh, but in a startup you get uh, you kind of sort of become a, a jack of all trades which is very difficult in a corporate uh, world. I agree to that because there were a few things I wanted to do as part of my corporate work right but I was never led into that because obviously you're given a particular stream you're supposed to do that if it's technical if it's sales in a startup, you the whole world is at your at your you know disposal, and you can do anything you want, and you have to do everything that's required to make that startup successful. So you have to meet new people, you have to plan your product, you have to execute that, you have to hire the right team, each and everything, and that's what you enjoy. You can do what you feel like doing today in a startup, which you can't do obviously in a corporate world. I think what you guys are trying to say is that, you know, I think it's just an expansion of your paradigm, right? Because uh, earlier you're only doing one thing, but in a, in a startup you're doing like everything. Yeah, and, and uh, Not really. I mean, I would uh, like to put a point there. Uh, see, in a corporate world, though and you have been listened to, uh, you are making your own set of decisions. But how much you influence in the whole chain of the business is completely limited. I mean... It's absolutely something you cannot recognize. What was my influence in the entire business chain that my organization is running? But the moment you jump to a startup, you're the only person who are going to influence how your business is going to take off and run from there. So that's the point where each founder will actually understand how good are his or her decisions and how well he or she can influence their own organization when they make those decisions. It's impossible to do to do this kind of evaluation on yourself when you are in the corporate world. You can understand your own decision making and leading abilities only when you start. Up. If you like the show, do follow us on Facebook and Twitter. The link is www.facebook.com/foundersgyan and twitter.com/foundersgyan. Both these provide you daily tips and articles as well as resources to help and inspire your startup. There are multiple tips per day. Some examples of these tips would be articles on the latest startups, growth hacking tips, how do you build team for startups, how to get funding, etc. So don't forget facebook.com slash foundersgyan and twitter.com slash foundersgyan. Okay, fair points there. I think, uh, I think uh, uh, there are fair points on both sides of the, uh, of, the, of the table. Now, let's come back to the negative side of things. Uh, negative side of things that you're seeing after... Uh, leaving a job obviously you're not getting a salary anymore i think that's a given i think everybody knows that but what else is there more to it than just a salary that you're not getting what else are you seeing that's a negative i think the toughest part is to face uh, downfalls every single day right so out of the 365 days maybe 300 days will be really bad uh, and the rest 65 you're not not in office rest 65 you're on vacation i guess so you really need to pick up yourself every single time motivate yourself and get going fired up the very next day again you cannot afford to lose a day at all yeah yep i guess uh, just to add to piyush's point right i think it's it's also about uh, living without a manager right because you've always been told what to do or we know, okay, these are my KPIs, these are the things I have to do, these are the people I need to impress. But when you have your own organization, it's it's, it's not really that uh, black or white. And you have like a blank piece of paper and it's really up to us to, you know, say, okay, this is what I'm going to focus on. And the next part, after you've decided what you focus on, we have to commit to that and we have to continue doing that. So I guess 
from my side, that would be one of the difficult things that I've been going through ever since I left work. Yeah, I think just to add to you, Naga, I think you you raised a very valid point that uh, in a normal job, we are always told what to do and in a startup, uh, we need to take our own de- decisions. Uh, and uh, I guess having a co-founder could, uh, uh, could reduce some of this burden because you have somebody to talk to. Uh, and uh, again, if things aren't going so well, uh, in a corporate, you have a chain, you know, you're, you reach out to your manager, you escalate to your manager who can uh, guide you, she or he can guide you. Uh, and then if even if it's beyond uh, uh, your manager, then uh, he or she further can escalate up the chain to somebody with more authority who can guide you. Uh, but in a corporate, uh, in a startup, I think taken care by having some mentors, but then again, there's there's nothing like a escalation matrix, right? I mean, uh, you might have a mentor if you're lucky, and uh, if you if you know some people, you might have a mentor who you can reach out for some guidance if things aren't going well. Uh, but then again, uh, then it's just a one to one. Your mentor says something, and then you both have to decide what to do. Yep, exactly. And it's also that structure, right? Like you said, it, it, you can reach out to your colleagues, you can reach out to your manager, you can reach out to HR. The possibilities are truly, you know, pretty vast. Yeah, but uh, that, I mean, to me, that's not really a disadvantage. That's how uh, the startup ecosystem operates. And that's what you have put yourself into, when at least with uh, the experiences that we all share, we all have had in the corporate world. I think we all understand that that is what we are putting ourselves into. And that's what we want to face and check our own potential. So uh, valid points, but... Personally, I don't see it as a disadvantage and that's the challenge we all want to face and get through. So, yeah. One negative thing I want to add here is <clears throat> what I feel is uh, like startup is a one way, one way journey. I mean, many people, you know, they will say that, okay, I'll give it a try. And if it doesn't work, I'll come back. But thing is, if I today I go back to job, I know I am not going to enjoy that. Right. So, I think you will be uh, whatever the changes this venture will bring to you those will be permanent there will be no reset position so you start a venture then if you go back to job uh, mostly you will again find find out something new some venture and you know means uh, you'll keep trying and the settling part can come only in the startup after that once you start your new venture any first venture right so that is one thing and financially also if you either you are very you you know you become successful or you have chosen you have chose to destabilize yourself financially till that point right so currently if this thing fail then i will have to finance also i have to start from scratch only so these are two negative points which you know they keep on coming to your mind i i want to add one uh, yeah this uh, time with your family probably the most uh, impacted area according to me because once you start up you you are constantly giving a lot of work to your brain as to what to do how to proceed what's tomorrow what should i concentrate on and you are in your own world and you are no more the same person who you know who had that fair amount of uh, uh, clearance to give yourself a break at end of the week uh, once you start up Saturdays and Sundays doesn't mean anything more other than two more days in the week. So you just keep working. You are in your own world. You are in your own uh, n- real new attitude, real new approach to life. Uh, what takes a beating there is the time we share with the family. And most of the people would agree with me that their family people would see that impact. I mean, you don't see it because you are running on your journey, but the family people in the family would really complain at times that you don't have any time to spend spare for us that's one negative part i would a like a tip on that is that include your wife <laughs> into your <Yes>. startup <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah great great points there i think i think uh, i just want to address each of those i think i have something to add on that also so uh, dinesh uh, uh, when you mentioned uh, about uh, sorry what was the first point you mentioned i mentioned that uh, like uh, the stability part yeah yeah stability yeah stability stability yes right so yeah i've also noticed this uh, in my own journey and uh, in a few of my friends uh, they never go back to a corporate job they are okay to you know keep trying new ventures keep trying till it 
till uh, till they succeed uh, even if they fail multiple times it's okay uh, but i think it's a mindset change that uh, comes upon a person once they start up that uh, they so naga this is <laughs> probably a warning to you maybe uh, you would be different maybe you would go back but uh, we have seen this in our journeys that it's kind of a little difficult to go back uh, to a job regular job uh, once and the second point dinesh that you mentioned was uh, very very pertinent the lifestyle changes you know the the cash flow uh, the lifestyle changes especially uh, i will tie it in with shankar your point about the family uh, ca- can be a little hard on the family i know uh, humans are very resilient people and you know uh, yesterday we might have been living very luxuriously and uh, today once we start up you know uh, we kind of like cut down on all expenses you know don't go out <laughs> you know try to uh, try to stay at home <laughs> whatever uh, uh but uh, it can sometimes be hard on your family uh, peesh to your point include the wife in it uh, i think uh, the wife the spouse uh, you know the family understand that you're trying to do something uh, but kind of they also are used to some kind of a life you know it may not really you know uh, the uh, the the bandwidths may not really match in terms of the lifestyle you know they might understand uh, deep in it you know it takes a lot of uh, change uh, it, it needs a lot of change from the entire family to adjust to the new lifestyle you know it brings in a bit of restlessness uh, even though they uh, consciously agree and want to support you completely Uh, the whole thing would bring in a bit of restlessness because everybody is worried about what's tomorrow and it's too hard to take it out from everyone uh, at any point yep i think it's because we 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 like stability so much right just to add to dinesh's and more ram's point yes. we like stability so much <laughs> right now that's my mom's question every day what are you doing <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> so it, it's kind of un- unfortunately it never goes away because i am also trying to find out what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> right right okay i think i think we are dwelling a little too much on the negativity so let's move on to give some tips for other founders who are uh, looking to leave their jobs and start up what, what are some good tips that you can give uh, I, i will censor out any tip that says don't start up so <laughs> feel free to add anything else uh i would uh, say i mean after i started i realized that there's certain amount of networking that is needed before you start up Uh, it's it's not also good yeah it's good once you decide you take a plunge and uh, face the reality uh, but on the other side uh, i think i fully uh, appreciate what naga is trying to do here uh, try to do a bit of uh, networking talking to people understand what you really want to do be sure on what you really want to do and then once you have uh, that uh, concrete mindset of what you really want to do then you actually can formalize it and you know get it into a startup uh, because uh, i i kind of understood that it making a quick uh, transition from uh, uh, being uh, uh, employed into a founder is not all that good maybe make it a bit slow talk to people understand lot of uh, ecos understand the ecosystem uh, understand the dynamics around being a founder and then take a plunge So so I think uh, working that's a that's a great point and I think that techniques like where you don't need to uh, just leave your job and start up you can start something on the side uh, I think it's also called the staircase method start building some clients at the side uh, spend your weekends and nights on your startup uh, once you get some bit of traction and you know that okay this is going to uh, take a shape uh, then maybe only then leave your job of course uh, there are people who say the other thing also that if you are not fully committed you know it's it's a fine balance obviously but uh, that that is one more technique you can use uh, for all our, all our lists uh, you don't really need to leave the job like but, but you have weekends you have to give your nights you know you have to spend a lot of lot of time on the side if you're doing something on the side otherwise it will just remain a pet project you know it won't really uh, become a startup unless you spend uh, some uh, substantial time on it okay uh, i'll pitch in rap so i think the biggest thing uh, the for people to start up is planning right planning in terms of their finances planning in terms of their network like shankar mentioned and also doing planning and doing their homework uh, just to reduce the probability of uh, you know or increase the probability of success right so when when you know that okay i am going to do this this is how my business plan is going to be this is who my networks are going to be i think the confidence that you'll have when you begin also will be a lot more and it'll also set yourself up for success better 
Okay, great planning. Planning that's another another key point. Anything else? Uh, I, I would like to add uh, something like self assessment is very important. You know, you have to understand what you're made for. So whether you are a technical guy or you're a business oriented guy. and at that point of time you also should assess whether you have others who can help you in the other complementary skill sets right then it makes it much more easier for you to leave your job get started and get that get make that successful so self assessment is very important right self assessment and also i think uh, the other point uh, uh, that you made uh, can be expanded to maybe have some co-founders you know a lot of uh, successful companies have co-founders you know it's not just about success you know some college friends get together or in dinesh's case some colleagues get together you always have a moral support you know somebody else who believes uh, in what you what you guys are doing uh, you know you have each other to prop you up when things don't work out so well and uh, you have two brains two brains is always better than one brain Uh, so i think if possible uh, obviously it's not a mandatory requirement for starting up but if you have co-founders then that is a plus point you know that would be something great uh dinesh you have anything to add any other tips yeah uh, see a uh, few things are like you know logistics which require like uh, we say networking and lot of information which we can get but one more important factor is you need to you know assess your risk appetite what works for me may not work for others right so uh, statistically you know the chances of failing are very high and we should not uh, you know cover it up so if you are starting startup first you should prepare yourself what will you do once you fail there what will you do? No, i'm not saying that you prepare for failure but i'm saying you should be you know you should you should see that as a reality so that thing should not break you and you should uh, accept that that if something uh, of uh, that matter happens i'm okay with that i'm accepting that right so that will make you uh, you know more relaxed and uh, uh, they say like you know when you have lost everything you can you are free to do everything anything right so that risk assessment you only can do about yourself right uh, i might be more risk taking person but uh, you should ask, ask yourself are you happy in your job maybe you are happy maybe not everybody have to start a startup or something right you should do when you are fully ready and uh, about that you only can decide right right excellent excellent point uh, uh, dinesh uh, risk uh, risk appetite each person has different risks and you know maybe maybe you don't need to start up maybe within your own organization you can grow and uh, you are very happy i mean uh, i think one of the problems is that uh, startups are seen as uh, sexy and you know get rich uh, overnight uh, which is kind of misleading to the public so i think uh, i think a show like this uh, would uh, kind of get the more reality into people's minds uh, you know uh, again the risk is high reward is also high but uh, you know the loss can also be high so i think people need to understand that uh, now uh, we're just going to have some final thoughts and uh, wrap up so Uh, each of you uh, could answer this like uh, finally based on your experience is it worth taking the plunge uh, yes no maybe uh, something else i don't know <laughs> i think i'll get going uh, so uh, irrespective of whatever i say if, if somebody believes in himself and wants to start up they will right so but i always feel that you should be selfish enough to take some time of your life to do something that you're passionate about and and I think I enjoy this journey and I, I I would recommend everybody who has this appetite to start up should start up okay anybody else agree disagree yeah f- fully agree to what piyush is saying because uh, even after the statistics saying that 90% of the startups fail why do you see those 90% people starting up uh, it, it's something else that is driving people and that should stay because even you get even that last 10% out of the same passion because if people stop starting up you won't get those 10% successful startups and uh, and it, it should remain and it should grow that uh, i think we should be happy that uh, india is seeing such a phase where uh, people are openly coming out of their uh, you know secured jobs and starting up to do what they like uh, i think i w- i would recommend people to start up and have this experience once in their life and it's going to change the way they are going to look at their own life okay so i i'd like to say that definitely take the plunge 
but uh, take the plunge after considering a few things one is the fact that there is no overnight success right uh, we don't really generally see the hard work that uh, others would have put in over the last 10 years 15 years 6 months one year all we see is from the moment that their popularity spikes so one is there's no overnight success the second one is start up for the right reasons don't start up for the money don't start up for the success don't start up because it's sexy to say that hey i am a co-founder here is my card but start up because you want to make an impact start up because you want to change the lives of your customers and start up because you want to make their life easier and by contributing the skills that you have and you want to see a change and you don't just want to sit and complain about it yeah two things i want to add here uh, like naga said that uh, don't start for the sake of money i want to over emphasize that because if you are starting today for next one year or one to two year you are anyway not going to see any money right so <laughs> first thing you should uh, learn to kill your love for money if you have any and uh, second thing is uh, again uh, it's about passion like uh, if uh, you ask yourself is is it is the thing which you ma- which you want to do it is this is the only thing i want to do in my life right then definitely go for it because uh, your startup cannot be your side job your startup cannot be your plan b it has to be plan a to z otherwise uh, chances are very less okay okay so i would also like to add my own thoughts uh, so i think uh, Uh, i completely agree with what you guys say uh, but uh, in my opinion uh, maybe dinesh is going against what you say but it's not necessarily required to completely leave your job and uh, you know start up you can have that as a side uh, side gig uh, you know till some point when it takes up uh, dinesh i don't know uh, do you disagree is that what you say just now <laughs> no we see in, uh, i think we all have our different journey right so there's not a s- short short like we we also tried uh, with our uh, when we were in intel so we were working for 6 month we worked along intel but the, that did not work out like uh, our product did not move we were you know we were planning every everything every week we used to you know committedly 20 to 25 hours right or weekends but product did not move so maybe the requirement of the product because it it was more technical on the uh, effort size so maybe that was the reason so for us it did not work uh but in other case it, if it works then it's good right okay okay great uh so i i just have one point to add which is uh, even if you st- so i would i would definitely recommend do startup uh, whether you go all in or uh, go uh, on a side gig but uh, just remember that uh, if you have uh, Uh, if you if it doesn't work out it's not that it's not you have failed you only learned so uh, i would like all our listeners to think that uh, failure is not the end of the road uh, each time you fail you are learning something new especially in a startup uh, failures are to be em- em- embraced and uh, you know i think we should consider it as a learning opportunity what went wrong do better next time so we will uh, wrap the show up uh, but before i let you guys go uh this is how all my shows end so i want a uh, one gyan uh from each of you with regards to starting up uh f- just just one gyan if else is going to air and only this part is going to air what would be your one gyan uh to would be founders or people who have started up okay uh, one thing i would tell is uh, i think uh, you mentioned it ram uh, it's an uh, obviously sexy uh, startups are cool but that's not it that's not going to take you anywhere one gyan i would give is pay attention to the boring things what you feel is boring those things that got to be managed those smaller things that got to be uh, that's pretty not so cool they are the ones that can fail you very easily so my gyan is pay attention to those smaller boring details which has to be taken care of if you have to move your startup yeah, i would say i mean it's a cliche but i would say dream big strive really hard to get there and learn all the way along because there's nothing like the joy of creating something from scratch and seeing people enjoy it once it's there i would say uh, listen to your gut because uh, once you're starting up you'll have a lot of you'll have a flood of information coming in and uh, no matter what if anyone or anything that you listen or read says always listen to your gut because somewhere inside you know what is best for you and you know what is best for your organization and that's what matters yeah actually i don't have uh, one gyan actually it's a one recommendation i will say 
uh, there is a course online course is there uh, how to start a startup i had done it when i started it's free course it's of stanford university you can find its video on youtube so i will recommend each of uh, the listener to go through that they have some 20 to 23 uh, lectures it will help you to decide and it will help you to plan also that how long it will take right so that is a tip from my side Okay, so that's the Y Combinator videos, right, right, the right. YouTube's, YouTube's. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. It helped me a lot, so that's why I'm telling okay, you. Okay, we will link that up on the show notes. Uh, can I have any books, uh, book recommendations or uh, from each of you guys, one one or two books, uh, if you think that will help uh, our listeners? Uh, the Lean Startup uh, by, uh, I think it was Eric Ries. Lean, Star- yeah, Lean Startup by Eric Ries. That's something which I would recommend uh, people to read. Especially that's very useful for people who are starting small and want to take that staircase method. Uh, one is that uh, Peter Thiel's 0 to 1. That is very good book. Uh, my book recommendation would be uh, The $100 Startup by uh, Chris Gilbo. I read a lot of non-fiction but yeah, any, any book on the autobiography of somebody who you really look up to, I think that helps. Something like Steve Jobs, I, I really enjoyed that. I, I recently uh, uh, go, went through uh, Elon Musk. I think that's a that's a great one. I think if you're interested in autobiographies, I think uh, that's that's a really nice one. Uh, Steve Jobs is on my on my uh, reading list. And one more thing, probably I would uh, uh, propose is the Innovators Dilemma. Uh, that was one of Steve Jobs' favorite book. Uh, I think that's uh, it was written by Clayton M. Uh, one of the best uh, books for how a company should be running. Uh, it emphasizes on how a company fails when you lack innovation or you are dwelling on your current success and you are not disruptive in your innovation. So that's a good book as well. Okay. Excellent. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, it was great. Uh, so thanks. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks for making us part thank of you. this. Thank you. Thank you. There you have it, folks. A slightly different take on Founders Gyan and hope you enjoyed it. Do check out foundersgyan.com slash EP65 for the show notes. I'll see you all next week with more Gyan about startups and action items for you to take. Till then, do keep listening to our show and take action on your own startup today. Good luck and bye for now.